There's your colors this morning. Wish it come in a little bit better than it is, but that's pretty close. So I go like this, and then it's gone. I figured you haven't seen Boomer and her baby together for a while. Yeah. He's over half her height. So, I just happen to think she's right there. He's right here, enjoying his breakfast. A couple others just chilling over here. Part of them are already up in the barn. I think there's only there's a calf over there. Little calf on the other side. Hey, you can't see him on the screen. Here. Hey, look. See, there he is. He or she, probably a she. And I don't know that that other one's. I think that one's a calf, too. It's still a little dark. And one hiding right there. And there's one or two can't see in the corner. And kick her back and. A uh, little different view from down here. Colors aren't showing like they were. And those are clouds over that way. More so than on around. But here, if we get that red and shot all the way around, well, it's over there. And that is southwest. So that's kind of opposite of the way the sun's coming up. Then we'll tip down and check this out. There's critters over there. There was a couple over here by the traveler before I came down, but they're not there anymore. I'm trying to think where to put that little one. I think I'm going to run it down the lane. So I can't run anything across here if we're going to do, hey, I need here and I need up the draw. With nothing in the way and not a whole bunch of water. I can run it up there and not run it clear over. You know, at least run the pump for a while. I'll probably end up shutting it down while we're doing hay today. And with hot weather coming, it's probably going to be a hit and miss anyway. I think we're supposed to be like, I think they said 98 today. Okay, so that translates into we're probably going to be freaking 102. Tomorrow... Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, Friday, whatever. They're all supposed to be 105 plus. Well, 104 in Portland, so we're going to be probably 110. Which means, yeah, I'm not going to run irrigation all freaking day in that crap. And I may set the big one up after we don't need to go through here because I can run the hose across the lane. And I can stretch it out over here and get a good share of what they're doing on at least get some coolness for them i don't know we'll see i kind of want to keep both running because i do need to keep this over here going good and i think when we get the hay off i'm gonna try to get it so that group can go through the gate up there on top and get on the hay field we're also going to get the water on it fairly quick too I cut it pretty short, so there's not much there for them to eat when they get in there. Other than clean up around the edges. I don't know what Lena's doing here. Kind of like she was walking funny for a minute. Uh, maybe she stepped on a rock, that happened. But she's still... Moving a little funny. Hmm. Looks okay. Don't see no swelling. She's not gimping. Now she's acting more her normal self. She's kind of a bitch. I'm gonna guess maybe that's her calf she's following. And 321A, I didn't even know you were standing behind me. Gonna be shy now, huh? Maybe that wasn't Lena's cow because it just went over to that other cow and started eating. And Lena's still going. 
Another baby getting her breakfast. Okay, I gotta get moving. But I'll get moving. I get too slow. A bunch of slackers in here today. Yeah. You can't fit through there. You don't belong in here. If you get out of the way, somebody else will come in. They didn't think I was going to feed them yet, I guess. They waited till all the buckets are full and I got them in here and then they finally come in. I don't know. Almost didn't get to show you any babies in here this morning. Hi, 713. And the pest. Yeah, first two in. She's a little bigger than he is. I don't know if she'll let me. Let's see. Yeah, she'll touch me, but I can't touch her. That's okay. That's okay. I can scratch her butt, though. I can scratch her, and she'll run a little. And then he'll just... Well, his mom has been licking on him. He that or he stood in the wrong spot and got peed on. I don't know. He may have been sneaking from the back door this morning. Because his face is a little damp, too. He's going to come try to rub it on me. Well, I'm going to feed him. Morning, Curious George. Figured I'd get you a shot of this while I can. That would be one of the neighbor's two quad tracks. They're disking it this year, which is kind of unusual. They went to a chisel plow about three or four years ago, and I haven't seen the disc out until now. But got to work the ground a little different once in a while. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That's a 17-foot. It's the bigger Case IH offset disc. So they're only two feet bigger than ours is. They just pull it with a lot more power. You probably can't see it, but there's chunks in that hay here and there. I've been playing with the rakes for, hey, look, I'm making my third windrow. Trying to get it so we're actually getting it fairly clean, but not grabbing chunks of that dried up crap in between. Had the same problem the last couple fields we did for big bales too. It's trying to thatch even though I'm like two inches off the ground with the teeth. And I've raised it up again and played with it. And I'm missing some strips here and there. And we're still getting it. And this piece, it shouldn't get it. Other than this end where it's rough, and, or rougher, I should say. So, I don't know. I guess mom's going to have to deal with a little of that in her horse hay. Every now and then you see a little bit of dirt on the end of something. But, and yeah, right here there's a freaking funky spot. So I got to raise. As I'm coming around, raise it up so we get out of the dirt. Come around here. And, sorry, but I need both hands. A little contemplating the junk I'm getting in the windrows. There's some right there. I'm finding some of it laying over here, too. Now, Becky scattered all this yesterday, and I set that rake. It was just enough to catch what's here. It wasn't hitting the ground. So I can blame it on that. But the other places where I noticed that crap in the windrow, we didn't run the scatter rake over. It was cut, and it was uh, raked and baled. That brings me to another thought. Just a funky year, and the shoes on the mower are dragging stuff. I don't know. 
The New Holland mower has a shoe under each disc. If they're getting a little junk on them and sticking a little and dragging the stuff out, I can see that. You don't see anywhere on the ground where it came from. It's just there in the windrow. So I'm kind of leaning toward that. And probably never noticed it with the John Deere mowers because John Deere mowers have guards under every disc. But they actually have shoes at the ends of the cutter bar. So you've only got two feet, if that, out of ten feet that's got something rubbing on the ground. So, anybody got any ideas, if I'm right or wrong, let me know. I mean, you know, the rake makes sense, but unfortunately, you know, I keep raising it, and any higher than I am, I mean, I'm missing some now. There's scattered out between those two rows. I mean, yeah, I can cut this lower, but hell, we used to cut a lot that high too, and didn't have that issue. I don't know. Hey, anybody smarter than me, let me know. She's a bailing. Had her get a couple bales on the ground and take the probe to it and check it. She says we're running eight to ten percent, which is what I figured. I mean, hell, it's quarter after two in the afternoon now. I wanted her to get on earlier, but <coughs> excuse me. But Ron's truck got fixed, so they had to go get in and uh, had her doing a few other things. So, but it's a bailing, and I'm having fun in this piece raking because the other end's heavy, so I'm only putting two rows together, and most of this I'm putting four rows together. She says they're solid bales. We'll find out in a little while. I get done here, I'll get the bell wagon. And uh, Ron's actually here, including his truck. But I don't know what to have him do. So, number one and I were just chatting on the radio and decided maybe he can go grease the mower so it can get put away. And there's a little white dot over there. It's him sitting there on the bike, waiting for her to tell him what to do, I imagine. I told her to take care of it. So, round and round we go, way too many times, don't you know? And the bad thing is, when it gets hot like this, the wind kicks up. Directly behind me in the other field, it wiped out about an 80 foot strip. Can't see much for windrows in it, but... In this one, I don't know. I'd like to see a heavier windrow than that. She just told me what gear she's running in, and it's like, well, I guess I didn't get the windrow big enough. But it's so fluffy and it's dry, it's hard to tell how big the windrow really is. Till you get there with the baler. And I know I got this heavy strip, and you can see the definite line right there. Right there. So, that's why I'm just doing two together down here. The outside's actually three, the far windrow. But these others are just two. Maybe I'd get by putting three together, but if that's the case, I gotta put six together on the rest of it. So And uh, I got to thinking and looking at that stuff that we're getting in the windrows, I think it is what I was thinking about. I think it's getting caught on the shoes on the mower. I mean it makes sense and with what it is and where it is. It's not like there's similar stuff in the rest of the hay. I think it was the annuals that get fuzzy at the bottom, get some leaf at the bottom. But you know, they die and then the roots die off. And when you come back through, you're dragging the ground just a little bit. Not much, but a little. And that's all it takes to knock it out. I don't know. Like I say, if somebody can come up with a better idea, let me know. You know, if there's something I can change, I'll change it. I don't need that shit in the hay. It's there, nothing I can do about it now. What I'm gonna do, take a guess. I'm just gonna pick one load up. I'm gonna try to get as much off the far end as I can clear so we can get the irrigation going up here. It was uh, 98 degrees half an hour ago. 
way too freaking hot. What she did bail was from 8% to 10.2% moisture, which 9% about the bottom of the threshold, so that's sitting there for morning. And I'm not even going to pick anything up till I get down there. I was going to start with that one, but hell with it. If I start with that one, then I'm going to do the next one, then the next one, and yeah. There's, uh, according to the counter, there's 335 bales out here. That translates to 3.8 something something loads. So just shy of four loads. I'm impressed. That's pretty good. And this is really nice looking stuff. Just what's in this field with what's left in the back barn will finish filling that barn. The bad thing is it's a lot of handwork because unless the barn's cleared out, you can't get in there with a machine to do it. So, we're going to figure out where to put it. And the other field, I'm going to guess, is only going to be half of this. So, Anyway, i got to let you go so I can run it. Unfortunately, I can't quite do everything at once, especially in this field. It's rougher than the other one. I'm going to say she either read the counter wrong, sometimes they're hard to read, they get dusty, or the counter's way off. I mean, granted, that was the lighter end of the field, but <clears throat> I literally split it where I needed to to make clearance for the traveler to run through and not get the bales wet. I got a couple down there that might still be in the way, but I don't think so. Because my second run with the traveler lines up with that tree just to the left of the neighbor's house. So they should be out of the first pass. I have 88 bales on. And the center of this field is just about the left edge of their house or their chimney right in there somewhere. So I'm thinking more like 137 or 135, whatever it was, instead of 335. Actually, it's probably a little more than that, but because there's about another load out here, so it should be about 168, somewhere in there, 166, something like that. My math ain't working, so. <clears throat> anyway, one load off. Had a hawk out here playing with me. I was right in the middle of the field, cutting across, doing the corners, and he almost landed on the cab. I think he was after something on the ground in front of me. So, there it is. And uh, hey, if you stuck around for the very end, uh, daughter number two got a exhaust for a tractor where she works to get fixed. And I finally did that the other day, I showed you. And she got it on there today, and sent me a clip of it. Um, I don't recall, it's a Ford 1900 maybe. I don't recall. She sent me a picture of it, but hey, that's in my phone, and I can't see that while I'm videoing for you guys, so whatever model it is, I, I know a couple people asked about it, and uh, here in a minute, I'm going to let you go, because I'm going to stop down here and close the gate. When I get to the top of the hill, I'm going to stop and close another one and open one and let the cows out, because... The group that goes out there has been in all day. And the other group just came out a little while ago. They're over there eating on some bales. So, well, maybe try to actually get a little video of this thing going tomorrow because I know everybody wants to see it. There's videos out there of the same machine running in other fields. But I know, I know, I know. I don't have the links to those. And you don't watch those channels. You watch mine. I appreciate that. First time I have taken this across the bridge since we redid it, other than going over empty. And I totally forgot to stop and shut that gate. I got too busy cabin. I guess I'll go up and bring the bike back down. I can't unload this yet anyway. I got a combine in the way, and then I'm not sure how I'm going to do this because Thursday we got a feed truck coming, so I got to make sure there's no haystack in the way for him. Always great when you got things laid out wrong, but that's the way it is. I'm also kind of thinking I might move some big bales out and make a backstop and put the next load back closer to where it's going. 
That way I don't gotta carry it from clear over there to clear back there. So anyway, it's almost time to get this up, so I'll get it started and then y'all can watch it. Here, hold that and point it to there. It's already videoing.